everybody wants to know how I store my freezer meals. Hey friends, welcome back to my home. So I have kind of have a little series of these videos going on. About every six months I show you all my food storage area. Today we're gonna to be focusing a lot on my freezers and I'm gonna be breaking down kind of how I figured out my storage solutions in my freezers. If you are completely new to my channel, you maybe have never seen my cellar slash food storage area. This all may be very new to you. And if it is, I'll be doing a good tour of what I have going on right now. And the second half of this video, like I said, the first half here, we are going to focus more on my freezer storage. I've been getting a lot of questions about that. And a lot of you have already seen the storage you see behind me here with the canned goods and the other things I have in here. I have rearranged a little bit. I do have some new kind of areas that I've redone. And so I'm gonna take you along with me. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn the camera around. I'm gonna show you my freezer setup. We do live in an old farmhouse. So you're gonna see a lot of the walls kind of are chippy and old. It's not a big cellar at all. But the one benefit is that the walls are old and thick and they keep a nice cool temperature down here, mostly because our house is built into a hill. So a lot of it is under the ground um, and we're able to keep a very cool temp even in the warmest summer days. So with that being said, it's a great place to store our food and all of my home preservation projects. So unfortunately, this side of the cellar is the least lit or doesn't have very much lighting. So I set up one of my ring lights. We do keep this as dark as we possibly can. So obviously you want to store all of your things very well. You don't want to expose it to light. So this here is three small to medium deep freezers. And then over on this side of the cellar is all of the shelving area, which we will get to in a bit, as I mentioned. But like I said, I've had so many questions about how I organize these and how I use them. So we're gonna go ahead and just go one by one here. So this one here is fairly empty, which is one of the reasons I wanted to film this to really break down how I figured out how to do the storage system to maximize the organization so that we don't end up with stuff that is freezer burnt and goes to waste. So I realized that some of this storage is going to take up extra space in the freezer, but then you aren't losing out on things that are gonna get freezer burnt. So this one here is mostly empty. I'll explain all of that in just a second, but I'm gonna tell you what's in here. There's a second crate. I think if I lean in here, you can see. So there's one of these black crates and then there's another one underneath of it. In that is some pork and a little bit of scrapple. This here is all of my frozen garden seeds. They're just a lot of different vegetables and things like that. And then we have one lone pack of ground turkey in here, a little more scrapple, and that's all that's in this freezer at the moment. I did just clean everything out and I am actually in the middle of doing an inventory, um, taking stock of everything, writing everything down. I did all of the freezers today and all of the home canned goods, have not gotten to my dry goods yet, but I want to start doing that about every three months so I can keep track of what I have in here. So this is basically this freezer and this one. Um, I'm trying to make my meat freezers. We'll talk about this third one here in a second. This is the one everybody asks about. Um, but this here is just mainly beef in here. We do have some venison that's packaged right here. This is a very, very low stock of beef. We actually have one coming in a couple of weeks and that was part of my motivation to get all of this cleaned up too is because I want to organize it well whenever it comes. If we get a half beef, these crates have to come out because this is literally going to be filled to the brim with beef. Um, so we'll wait and see how much we get and what all we get it made into. In the bottom of the black crates here, we've got roasts and a few other cuts of meat. This is ground beef and then we have some steaks here and ground venison. 
So very low for what we normally have around, but ready to be restocked. And that is where we're at with all this. So I'm actually gonna put the camera back on to a tripod and turn this around so I can better explain this freezer. It does house our fruits, vegetables, um, and our like freezer meal type stuff. And that's what everybody wants to know, how I store my freezer meals. Okay, so hopefully I'm in shot here. It's kind of an odd angle where the light is and trying to show you everything here because deep freezers are deep, obviously. But I'm gonna go ahead and lift things out to show you how I navigate this. Whenever I'm looking for something in the freezer, it's very simple to grab these baskets that are on top, set them on something nearby, and get to what's underneath. So in here we have two crates, like the black ones you saw in the other freezers. One of them is just blue, or maybe they're both blue, I'm not sure. So what I do when I want to get to the bottom crate is I lift those top two ones off, and then I lift this one out, and I'm able to access what is in the bottom of the freezer without emptying all piles of stuff out of the bottom. So in the bottom, I do have some of my small um, soups. You guys have prepped these with me before. And we also have some big bags of like Costco strawberries and some cherries and then some other freezer meals stacked in here. Up here, I've got some local blueberries and some okra in here. Y'all are gonna recognize some of these. These are like breakfast sandwiches and baked omelets, things like that. We've got some French toast in here. So then I just set it right back down in. And obviously not all freezers are the same. So we're gonna talk about that. So what I did is I measured the inside, or if you have a new freezer, you can maybe look it up online, um, go on Lowe's.com if that's where you possibly got it, and find out the measurements inside your freezer. From there, you can find stacking crates, other things that are going to be able to fit in here. So a few things you may wanna take into consideration. Plastic, whenever it gets frozen, can smash, shatter actually. So depending on what type of thickness the plastic is, I've actually had very good success with these filing type crates that I have in here. Um, but you can definitely, there's lots of things you can play around with. What I then did is found baskets, and these are from Amazon actually, I will see if they're in stock and I will link them for you all, that sat on top and quite literally brings these top things right up to the top, exactly where this uh, basket that comes with the freezer sits. And I'm able to make use of this top space on top of the crates. So up here right now, like I said, I'm getting ready to do a pretty big restock on a lot of things. So this is a very low inventory of what I usually like to have around. We've got some yellow green beans, some green beans. I have some bell peppers. You guys know I love to freeze those. Got some frozen tomatoes from my patio garden that I wanna make into some tomato soup and a few other frozen veggies. Moving on from those deep freezers, I've got this old refrigerator. And you know what? I have really debated on whether or not we wanna keep using this, but it is so convenient to have a second refrigerator, even if it's old and ugly. <laughs> so obviously there is a freezer attached to this as well. And I just keep a few odds and ends in here, nothing too crazy. We've got some lemon juice, some gluten-free sourdough that I've gotten from Azure Standard some frozen fruits that I wanna turn into some jams, I think. And then we have a few of our ice packs um, that we use for camping and picnics and other things like that. Around the corner from the old ugly freezer is the exterior door, um, which is really nice whenever I come home from picking up meat or something, I can easily put it in here. A lot of you have seen this already and I have not done a ton of preserving this year. Last year was like a double year for me. Um, so a lot of this is from last year. And as you will see over here, this is actually doubled up. So there's box, a stack of boxes here of these jars. And there's a second stack back there. So there's double what you see here in the front. Then up on the top level, top shelf, we've got lots of empty jars. I'm actually 
completely maxed out on putting them all up there. And then of course over here, we've got a lot of empty jars as well. So that's good. That means we're using up what we've had, but it also means that I've got some work ahead of me for sure <laughs> on some restocking like I mentioned. So over here, I'm not gonna go into great detail just because you can go back on previous videos and see a lot of this. The newer stuff I've organized is actually on the other side of the cellar, so we'll go over there. Um, but I will touch on this just because there are a lot of people that haven't seen it. So if you guys are completely new here, I do have a Mennonite background. Both sets of grandparents were Mennonite. My parents were um, when I was young. And so this is a very common thing. People are very surprised that I show my food storage. Um, I guess in today's age, they're shocked with this. But in my opinion, it's a way of bringing some of the old traditions back to life in sharing this. So it's not that I'm here to hide it. Um, if you only knew how many <laughs> cellars and basements look like this from the Amish and Mennonite communities, you would be shocked um, how much they do food preservation and food storage. So here I've got just some fruits. I do can berries. A lot of people are curious about that. I can strawberries, you can see up here, and blueberries. And I've got jams and jellies. Last year was a huge tomato year for me. So I've got diced tomatoes, tomato sauce. I've got marinara sauce, we did salsa, which I'm almost out of, tomato soup. Um, I did some tomato paste, that's what these little jars right here are. Um, and so I am stocked up on tomato stuff. That is the least of my worries right now when it comes to my food storage. We've got grape juice down here on the bottom. Um, we got apple products over here, so applesauce and apple pie filling, apple butter, we've got grape jelly, we've got pickled beets, we have pickles and relishes down here. This is um, a big gap right here because I'm getting ready to do this actually, and that is creamed corn. It's an Amish way of doing it, and I we love it this way. I do not freeze my corn. Um, and as you can see, you possibly can see, there is a tomato in that jar, and that is because it helps to keep the corn from going stale, and it does not taste like store-bought canned corn. It tastes very fresh and very delicious doing that method. So maybe I'll film it this year. I did film it last year. If I remember to link it below, I will do that um, because it's a very simple method of canning corn. And then up here on the top, we've got some green beans, very low on those, some canned pumpkin, which as the fall rolls around, I'm sure I will use up this year. We have some baked beans and we've got chicken broth and beef broth here around the corner, along with canned butter and some canned chicken breasts. And then up here, I've got my canned, goodness, my words are getting tangled my canned shredded chicken breast. So that is what I use the most. Um, we don't use this type of canned chicken breast very much. Um, this is actually whole chicken. I said, this is actually whole chicken. I did say chicken breast, I think, but it's whole chicken shredded. And then this is just the breast, but we use this the most. Um, so yes, I need to restock on that as well, as you can see. So now we're gonna kind of pan around the seller because I know this interests a lot of people. <laughs> like I said, I love to help people just be inspired to do their own home preservation and storage and whatnot. And you know what, you guys, as I was doing some cleaning in here in the last couple of days and just like I said, cleaning things out, um, this area did not get a lot of attention. And I considered taking care of it before I filmed, but then I decided, you know what? Not everything in my house is always organized and put together. So I want you to see my nice piles of random things over here, including some mini marshmallows apparently, and other things that are not really in place, but you know what, they're on the shelf and that's all that matters right now. So as you're gonna see on the other side of this storage area, this here was on the other side and I rearranged a bit 
So this is a lot of odds and ends. Um, I would say accessories to home preservation, including just some home odds and ends. I have extra hangers here. I have lots of baskets hung up. We use those just for all kinds of things um, when we are doing home preservation or just storage, honestly, home storage, things like that. So we have just some, like this is a, Va not a vacuum sealer, a heat sealer for Mylar bags, like this silver one right here. Extra Mylar bags. Um, this is some lids that you use for sprouting things. We've got extra masking tape. I use this to label all kinds of stuff. Up behind here, we have weights for fermenting. That's what this is. It is a glass weight for fermenting. And then this is some other fermenting things. These are moisture absorbers that I like to put into my dry goods. There's two milk buckets here because we do get milk locally at times. So I just need those to go get it. This is just some extra dishes for like entertaining and that sort of thing. Don't have a ton of room in my kitchen. So this is just a good place to put that kind of a thing. This is a hum jumble stuff that really needs to be gone through, but <laughs> I've got lots of lids. These are just metal lids that you like the whole lid together. This is a lid that goes with a ring and I'll show you where all of my rings are here in a minute. This has got my vacuum sealer, extra vacuum bags. This is like a little uh, pumpkin scraper toolkit. I mean, we could dig through this and probably spend some time in here, <laughs> but I'm just giving you an overview. Got extra cutting boards because a lot of times I end up doing home preservation projects either with my daughters, they are old enough to help me out now, or with my sister-in-laws or my mom. And so these come in handy, having extra cutting boards. These are corn creamers. If you've never seen these, these might be interesting. Again, um, with that video, whenever I do the canned corn, you'll see these in use. You have to be very careful <laughs> when you use these. You can lose the tip of a finger if you're not careful. Um, this is just one, I think I have two in here, one of my apple peelers and corers, great for apple season. We've got some strainers, lots of goodies in there. And below that, I've got my freezer containers that I really love using for soups and things like that. I have a weight here that is a non-electronic weight. I just think it's cute and there are times I do use it. And then I have my little camping coffee maker because we were just camping. Somehow it landed down here. This is extra oils and vinegars. Um, I do buy, you can see the temp in here. I had the exterior door open today because I was mopping in here and stuff. So that temp will drop as I leave the door closed. Anyways, here is vinegars and oils. And a lot of them I get from like Azure and other places where I buy them by the gallon. So then I refill my bottles in my kitchen. This area is this corner shelf is kind of a hodgepodge of all kinds of things. This is a lot of beans, popcorn and pasta that's been put into Mylar bags. Once you do that, you can keep these things for quite a few years um, in storage. So that's convenient. Up there on top, we've got some extra gluten-free flour. And this idea here, a lot of people liked, I believe in my last storage tour, and that was these big uh, bungee straps, bungee cords wrapped around. It just helps to kind of give a railing for things to not fall off of your shelving. And it's a very cheap, budget-friendly way to do that. Down here, this is what I call my catch-up shelf when I tell my girls, go get me a bottle of this or that on the catch-up shelf. <laughs> I'm referring to these two shelves. They just kind of get a lot of little odds and ends. Ketchup ranch, mayo, those sorts of things. And they do need to be restocked. We're gonna go all the way to the top of this shelf. Up here, I've got extra Ziploc bags, saran wrap, foil, um, pl some plastic wear, paperware for when we have family events and things like that. And I do like to get my Ziploc bags at Costco. So a lot of times they get shoved up there. This area, most of these things here 
hold baking things mostly. There's a lot of odds and ends in here. And a lot of these ingredients came from Azure or in another bulk form from a bulk food store. And then I just end up kind of storing it all here. So a good example of that is this cocoa powder. I think all of this is from Azure. We've got a couple containers of baking powder in here. Odds and ends. These are the meat sticks you guys saw in that one shop with me at a bulk food store video. And I've got like, this is shredded coconut. I mean, I could dig a lot of stuff out of these. I'm not gonna, but here we have some more shredded coconut and I believe there is a lot of chocolate chips and there is pudding, instant pudding in here because this is the secret ingredient in the best chocolate chip cookies ever. So keep that on stock. And then down here, I actually eat very low sugar myself. And so um, I eat a lot of like, pasta alternatives, rice alternatives, and things like that, just for some health issues. Um, here is some sprouted oatmeal. We've been using that a lot lately. This is just a low sugar baking blend. Um, little baking uh, mixes. I think this is some granola that I picked up at one point. Down in here we've got some nut butters and some mayo and some liquid stevia. Like I said, just a mixture of stuff. We have molasses and we have beef gelatin and we've got cornstarch that is non-GMO. Love to keep that on hand and extra snacks and things like that. More pastas. Those red boxes at the bottom there are actually vacuum seal bags that um, from a brand I worked with at one point. I really like their stuff. And so that is what that is. Extra paper cups because that's where they fit into this shelving. <laughs> on top here, you're gonna see a little peep at what is on the other side of this. This is all amber dropper bottles um, that I use for different projects. We have some Azure bags here. This is peanuts to make my own peanut butter. And then here I've got a bag of pinto beans. I wanna get those canned up. We've got some freeze dried things. Um, this is a mixture of dried and freeze dried things that I've done myself or I have bought in bulk. Here is just a hodgepodge of different spices and dried things. And then down here on the bottom is my I need to get to pile of sprouts and beans. And this is actually a very large bag of uh, pink Himalayan salt, the Redmond's Real Salt. I love that salt. Got some baking soda, some wine that just is there <laughs> because I haven't used it and it just keeps sitting there. Um, and then we're gonna work our way around the corner. This little nook, I've just kind of hung some S hooks on and I hang up extra little harvest baskets and things like that here because it's a great place for me to store them. Great place for them to stay dry and for me to grab when I'm down here shopping in my food storage. All right, so we're gonna come around the corner to the other side or what I keep referring to as the other side of the cellar. I had to move my ring light so you guys can see because this is a very dark space. And one thing that interests me and that I really love to use in our lifestyle is home remedies, herbal remedies and things like that. So with that comes lots of goodies. <laughs> if you have even dabbled in this or looked into it, you know that there is a lot that can go into herbalism and things like that. And I always get lots of questions when I get, um, when I show this and um, I don't like to give tons of answers because I feel like to each their own on what they like to do with their family and what they like to use. And so I've done a lot of my own reading and researching to come to conclusions on things or even trying different things that have worked for us. So starting up here on the top, this is just my citrus juicer. <laughs> that's just a spot it fits down here. So that's why it's sitting there. We've got some extra Mylar bags and I want to say there might be a couple bags of loose herbs up there. I'm not sure, I need to look in that box, honestly. And these crates I actually found at a flea market. They were like a vegetable crate type thing. They fold up these big black ones here. You saw some in other places. 
Um, I think there's one on the other side over there and they're just super handy. They fit great on these shelves. So up here, this is just some lavender that I was dried and I was going to do some stuff with. It is from last year. I don't know that it has a whole lot of value left to it, but it's really pretty right here. So I just leave it hanging there. These here are all tinctures that I have made myself. Um, this is just some tea bags, some of your own disposable tea bags. I don't really know why that's sitting there. I haven't found a home for it maybe. <laughs> and some little strainers for just things I use here. This is a, um, pestle is that how you say that I think so and I don't know why this is sitting here either but some of the stuff I just in the midst of me doing projects and stuff gets thrown in here this is just a bunch of bag stuff that needs to get put into jars and added to this library down here this is I believe some freeze-dried lavender that I harvested from last year and just some other little random things got a couple bottles I think these are all empty and I like to keep a few empty bottles for when I'm making new things. This is a bag that probably needs to get put in two jars, two bags. So I actually need to take the time to once again alphabetize all of my herbs. Um, they've gotten kind of shuffled around this past year and I haven't taken a ton of time to really take care of them. Down here on the bottom shelf, um, there is some things like dried elderberries. I wanna make some elderberry syrup here in the next little while. And then this is just some oolong tea. This is extractors um, to make tinctures and things like that. Have that sitting down there. Moving over to this side, this is the newer edition. Like I said, a bunch of those dishes and things that you saw on the other side were in here. Um, but I needed more space because we changed up the way our office closet is upstairs. If you all watch my home channel often, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna go into it right now, um, but I have a second channel that I do a lot of home organization on. And so this stuff was stored in that big closet and we had to rearrange that. So I needed to find a new space for it, which really, it's just an extension of this over here. So having it all together in one place makes me really happy. Um, I'm not going to dig everything out of these, but this has like an electric heating pad. These are hot water bottles. Um, there's just little odds and ends, some cotton swabs in this first one. Um, kind of this, anything that didn't fit in these two migrated to this one. This here is all, there's some like rubber gloves in here, some like medical grade gloves, um, just a few things, some braces, a splint, um, some like gauze wraps type thing. My husband plays sports, so a lot of his sore muscles and other things like that I do treat. And so um, having these types of things on hand, once you get into herbalism, there's a lot of extensions besides just treating the common cold. And so having the tools you need to practice those things is very nice on hand. Here is just some gauze bandages and band-aids. Basically any type of bandage type stuff is in this one. <laughs> Down here we have a Lazy Susan. This is just a lot of stuff we reach for fairly often um, when we have colds or um, sore muscles or just different things. These are just things we use a lot. Um, so I just like to have them here. We do have another spot upstairs that has things that we use even more often. This is more like if we have a soreness or a sickness or whatever that I can come get, but things like Advil um, and different salves and stuff that we use a lot. I do have a little place in the upstairs for that so I don't have to come all the way down here. This here is just some band-aids and some little cotton swabs and I'm gonna set them aside to show you this. This is something that I invested in this past year and just sort of went looking on Amazon, found a lot of different things for just tools to help us out <laughs> for different things. So we've got things like tweezers and nail clippers and um, things to take temperature in here and some nail files and things like that. I'm gonna come back to the top here in a second to show you guys something. Um, but in here, there's like, these are basically like temporary stitches if you ever need them. Um, just little things. There's more scissors, 
there's a pair of gloves in here, just that type of thing. But I'm gonna show you guys something that I don't know why it struck me all of a sudden one day last year to order this, but I went ahead and did it and it's been proved to be a really great purchase. And that is these, you guys don't know what these are. They are extractors. <laughs> and the reason that I ordered these is because we are in a stage of little ones losing their teeth. They got wiggly teeth. Sometimes you're trying to help them out. You're trying to reach in there, help them to get it out whenever it's down to its last little wiggle and your fingers slip. And that is the worst feeling ever for you and the child. So these here are designed obviously for the purpose of helping to remove, the, remove teeth. And so on the end of them, they have little grippers and they help to just pop that guy out without anybody having extra pain and it is one of the best purchases with having young children um, that can help you out and helps everybody go through that process without a lot of ouch going on <laughs> i know funny thing you never you did you probably didn't click on this video expecting to see that right um, this is just essential oils and some tinctures and just other things like so down here is just sort of a random bunch of stuff. We've got stuff that I get from Costco, like um, Advil and Tylenol and things like that, extra razors and toothpaste and just, yeah, I would say personal care items and things like that. We've got some rubbing alcohol and coconut oil. Then the bottom shelf just houses my water bath canner, my pressure canner, and I actually have a stock pot that usually sits down there too. Um, my mom is borrowing it right now. So that's where all of that is. This over here is my freeze dryer. I had somebody ask about this not long ago. This is not in working condition. Um, it has to have some work done to it and it's just not, yeah, it, it, it's not running. <laughs> the best answer I've got. It's not running. Below it, I do have my dehydrator. This is lids for second use. I'm not gonna go into that right now. I've talked about it before. And then these bins down here hold my rings. Then under the steps over there, we've just got a couple storage items. You can kind of see how tight it is to come down into this cellar area. This is another one of those crates that I got from the flea market. And this is a drop zone for used jars. It's all cleaned out right now but it's where we put used jars whenever I, we're done using them. Like they come out of the dishwasher, they can get sent down here and then I can organize them at a later point. So if the girls bring them down, you know, it can work out well for them to drop them right there. So just to give you a scanning overview, which I'm trying to do with my light behind me, but you have the large canning shelves that my husband built I've got this whole section and then around the corner here is my herbal library, my little apothecary and my machines over there. We've got the steps to climb upstairs and then just some home things, the HVAC system and whatnot. And then this is my dry goods storage. So I have a lot of flowers, oatmeal, sugar, those sorts of things that I buy in big bags in this area and then we are back over here to the freezer. So like I said, it's a very, very tight little space that I have done my best to <laughs> keep in running order for us. Um, it works really great for all of these sort of home creations, I guess, whether it's home remedies or whether it's home canned goods or homemade meals, <laughs> whatever you want to put on it, it is just a great space for that. So I'm glad that you all joined me today. I hope that this gave you some inspiration for your own food storage area. And if you're new here, I'd love it if you subscribed and gave this video a like, chat with me in the comments, leave all your questions there. I love to hear from you all and I will see you guys in my next video.